there's been a change in the way the grants are going to be given out and I've got I'm just going to share my screen here I hope and show you the proposal um, and this came from the strategic planning committee and has been approved by the executive board so it all, for all intents and purposes it's approved we just as a formality send it to the full system board but it used to be that school libraries were eligible for all competitive grants. And the strategic planning committee took the call from um, a big meeting we had in August and the biggest call was simplify the grant process. And so they've done that. They've rolled all those little bits and parts into one grant, except for the conference grant. But then that left school libraries with no competitive grants to apply for. And so what they did then is they, they suggested that each school library district get $500 a year to go equally to all of the libraries. So if you have three libraries, you're gonna split that between yourselves. Um, and that money can be spent on a limited number of things, just like all the system money can, but you can use it to purchase things that check out um, you can use it to buy a uh, check in and out check system or pay for the annual fees or continuing education as well. Um, there's going to be, there's not going to be an application for it. You're just going to get it every year at the end of the year, there will be an evaluation that's essentially going to say, what did you spend it on? And you could say 60 books or annual maintenance fee, $600. There won't be receipts or anything like that to submit. It'll be on the honor system. So it's, it's exciting and that starts in January. And we usually send out the first payment and we'll send yours in full then in March. And that's because we by March have received um, tax money from all the counties. Well, that's good to know. I hadn't realized that, that it would, mm -hmm. it would be in March. Yep, it'll be in March. Um, it's just a guaranteed thing. It's going to go, it, it, it has to be spent on the school library. And so if you're a district that just has one library, that's awesome. Jen, what are you thinking about spending your money on? Um, either theming it like putting books on kindness in each library or possibly audiobooks through Sunflower eLibrary. I don't know how that would work though. Um, if you want to buy digital content, you just let us know. And um, like if you wanted to purchase children's digital audiobooks, um, you would let us know. And then what happens is that we work with Dave Fisher. He's the Sunflower e Library coordinator for Kansas. And he would build up a list for you and send it to you. And you would say yes or no. Or you could send him a list um, and then he go ahead, goes ahead and builds the cart and then he, when he gets the money, he places the order and lets you know when they're in there. But if you want those as well, let us know because then we can buy them too. Okay. Well, I wanted audio books based upon the books the teachers read already in class. So a specific list. Yeah. So you'll want to send him okay. uh, a good list. Now, um, if there are <clears throat> almost every district is going to probably have two at least two libraries yeah but um you know the, does the librarian have to spend split it or can they no. say this year i'm going to spend it on elementary and next year i'll spend it on absolutely that's okay. certainly up up to the district or it could be you know if you have a couple of librarians that don't quite get along well it could be in 2021 <laughs> you're getting it and in 2022 I'm getting it or it can be split it down the middle. You can also split it up in how you're gonna buy spend it. You could spend some on materials and some for CE. I would earmark some for CE for sure. Um, or programming. Right, right. Um, I don't think programming. No? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's what quite a few of them have used it for. Because we'll have, have to we'll have to write that in next year if you remember that, Christy. Okay. We'll write that in. 
we were pretty pretty specific it's it's for basic stuff but we'll make sure we get programming in there for next year and debbie what do you think how many libraries do you have we have two um but i still haven't heard on my budget for this year so I'm having a meeting Wednesday, so I'm not even sure where I sit right now with supplies. So oh, yikes. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. What kinds of supplies do you usually need? Oh, just the usual book tape and and uh, corner protectors and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, well, I've I've made up a list. I've made up a list of things to continue my series to see i'll see what i can get yeah yeah well you, um, now you know you'll probably have 500 dollars in march if nothing yeah. that, that, that the very that least a lost, nice bonus <laughs> um it is it is um i was really pleased they wanted to start they started the number was 300 and then we went we bumped it up which was good because you can do something with 500 dollars significantly um where do you buy your supplies from um, we've got a contract through Greenbush for school specialty and Demco. Okay. I've bought through you guys before. Okay. Um, I some just labels. want to make sure you're getting the best discount you can. Yeah. Good. That's something I can look at this fall too, is mm -hmm. what Demco could do, see if we can do better than. Yeah. Than what they are. Yeah. I do a lot of searching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is it, but then you know there comes a point where it it costs more money to search. Or are you doing it at night when you should be not doing it? You know that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Public libraries. It's against the law for the librarian to volunteer their own time, and so they shouldn't be doing things at night. But with school librarians, there's no such law on the books, unfortunately. Hey, Debbie, is Cecilia? Did she retire? Or is she going to hang hang in there for another year or two? I think she's still going to be here for another year. I haven't heard any different. Well, when we when we weeded, that was on her checklist before she uh, retired. So I didn't I didn't know if it, she had done it this year or not. We we've kept missing each other. Last week we're supposed to visit this week. So okay well so do you guys have any more questions about that allotment from the from ckls that you'll get i have i have a question so okay. will will the money just go to like our district office we we're not exactly sure yet because okay. one of the things when everybody's back in the building christy's going to poll everybody and see what would be the best way to make sure it gets to the library and doesn't buy 10 basketballs yeah exactly that's what i why i was asking yes that's that's okay. my biggest concern it's not that you're not you're going to spend it on what you need to spend it on and this year i mean so in 2021 i'm going to ask everybody to keep a list of other things they could have spent that money on so we can add to this list but um I'm not worried that anybody's not going to fill out that, you know, four or five page, four or five questions at the end of the year, um, things like that. Um, my concern is, in, and we want to make sure that that money gets into the library because that's who it's intended for. Because yeah. most of you don't have any kind of budget. You get what you get um, and you do a great job making do. Okay, I'm going to. I think Ellen was just coming in. Okay, hi, Ellen. There you are. Hello. Ellen, are you driving somewhere? Oh, this is Cheris. Oh, that's Cheris. Why does it say? Yeah, Ellen? sorry, I just now got the link. Oh, but that's yeah, okay. I'm just waiting in a vehicle. Well, I sometimes I see people out there because it's the only place they get some peace and quiet quiet with yeah. everybody home now. That too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have noticed that because of the pandemic, a lot of people are um, retiring because they just can't imagine coming back and working 
the way it, oh. it, it the way it should be, the way it'll be so different. I know it's difficult for our school librarians, our um, public librarians right now as well. It's just everything is totally up in the air and 100 million questions, things like that. And I'm sure you guys have those too. What's it going to look like? Yeah. That segues right into what do you guys know about how you'll be reopening? Anything? Not a thing. Mm. I'm assuming it's normal in August. Have they not started talking about it or they're not sharing it out yet? They're not sharing. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a couple things I'll share with you and I think I'm going to do it on the screen again. Um, <clears throat> Gail has been really good about thinking ahead and <clears throat> I'm, I, I don't think you'll probably be able to adopt the whole plan, but it'll give you some things to think about and ask about and talk to your administrators about so that you feel comfortable coming back in and you have a plan to tell the teachers and you know what you're going to do with those books when they come back and all that. <clears throat> so, um, this is what Gail. Well, let me let me start talking first. You can look okay. at it. Um, OCLC, which owns the Dewey Decimal System and most of the catalog records in the whole wide world, if you don't know, is working with Battelle Labs in Ohio. And they sent a whole bunch of regular old, they had, they organized it in a bunch of places all over the country, sent regular old library circulating materials. Kansas actually got to send a couple of courier bags with library stuff in it to this lab. And what they are doing is they are testing it in this, this national acclaimed lab to find out what the skinny is on us for um, quarantining materials, for cleaning materials, how long does the virus live on there, how long is it contagious, just all those questions that we have. Um, and we haven't heard back from them yet, but we will soon. And we'll make sure that you guys all know that as well. So, so when she put this together, it was with the information that we have uh, right now. And you know, everybody's saying, well, it could change. Because um, it does. But phase one is, like uh, Gail said yesterday, um, we're, not, we're not in phase one yet. Uh, it, it'll be probably closed to the public. I'm not going to read all this to you. Um, <clears throat> I've got Marsha. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you want to have the right cleaning supplies. Um, you'll know, you can go when we get that information back, um, that, you know, how, how you're going to have to handle the books because maybe you start curbside services in another phase but that means the books are going to be coming back in and what are you going to have to do what is that going to look like you know when when you're bringing those back into your library and they could be um uh be infected and so you want to go through the right procedure so it doesn't spread all over the place um so phase one is just preparing basically to open. Um, your school is going to do all the cleaning and all that that they think is going to, um, you know, prepare for the kids or the staff to come back. So in phase two, um, and, and this is kind of really specific and it's to um, public libraries, but uh, they're still not open. You're still not open. You don't have kids there. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the staff stuff is going to be something you work out with your, with your district. But um, one of the things that we've um, run into with the public materials besides the virus mm -hmm. is that um, there are bug, bug beds out there. Bed bugs. Bed bugs. What did I say? Every county, yeah. <laughs> and um, 
because the materials in public libraries have been home with people for so long, they need to be um, treated before they're even quarantined. So that's, that's something we're working with. Do you guys have library materials home with kids right now? Yes. Yeah, we, we do too. Okay. And do you have uh, a plan for when you're gonna get those back or is there no plan yet? Well, first of all, we have to wait until the school can be open to have people come back in. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully everything is gonna go into the gym and we have a bug zapper on order. Good. Um, but how all the textbooks, all of the classroom books, all mm -hmm. of the papers, you know, um, we're looking at Chromebook bags next year. We're looking at backpacks coming into, and then they went and carpeted some of the rooms in the school. So it's oh. like wrong year to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. but they had the time so i don't know i can't get any replies that i need so i'm just going to hound them some more next week yeah and, and when you when you look at some of these procedures i mean it's just a way to say okay if we're opening in phases this is what this is i really need, i need to do for mm -hmm. um this is what is being recommended and you can use us, CKLS is researched, and this is what they're saying about getting books back. Um, and just so you have um, a procedure that you feel comfortable pushing because, you know, teachers and, and uh, administration don't always think through all this right. that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah, they won't be thinking about what it takes to clean the books. Um, I just texted my uh, son's fiance. She's a school librarian at Lynn Elementary in Dodge City, and they don't have a reopening plan for the fall yet either. So don't feel bad wherever you are. I, I figure probably they've got three months <laughs> to figure mm -hmm. it out. That's probably, you know, but, and it's so different because you have to go through the board and yes. your principals and, yeah. Well, We're seniors gonna... should be bringing all of their stuff back the middle of this month. There you go. That's true. And so that should be coming back. And then at the end of May, you have the parents that cannot wait to get those school materials out of their house and back to school. Right. So, as, I don't know. They can all sit in the gym. I don't know. Well, yeah, we had several books that were brought back when students came in to grab their Chromebooks and their other supplies and stuff. And I have not checked them in yet, but they're just sitting in a box and they've been sitting there for at least a month. Yeah, so they're um, safe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't really, what are you guys expecting? Like once they've been sitting there and in, in kind of in isolation or quarantine for a while, I mean, are you thinking just like Cloroxing, wiping? Well, right them? now. Right now they're saying for disinfecting 72 hours for books. We'll know okay. more when the, the, the research from the Battelle labs comes back. Um, okay. So if they're just sitting right now, they're perfectly fine. Yeah, um, they've been the in there for several libraries, weeks. Some of them are checking the Dropbox a couple of times a week. And so they're making a pile and putting a paper on it that has the day and then they know, okay, I can handle these in 72 hours. Okay. Um, and then, so things that you've got right now that are sitting are fine. When things that are, are start coming back, um, that's when we get, we're starting to get a little bit concerned. Um, you guys, I don't have to tell you, you know how dirty books are all the time. It could just be that you're <laughs> yes. you know, spraying a paper towel with rubbing alcohol and wiping, wiping them down on the outside and that's the best you can do. No library can be a, a sterile environment. We just have to do the best that we can do. And I don't think I'd use Clorox on it uh, unless it's got a plastic cover. Right. The, uh, it, the Clorox on the old bound books with the cloth cover, that color is going to bleed like nobody's business. Well, I was just thinking about ours that have like the Mylar wrapping, you know? Yeah. Like if you could just kind of wipe that quickly with some type of 
cleaning product, but right. Christy, wasn't yeah. there something that you presented when you did the book workshop? Was yes. it their type of cleaner that they recommended? There, it, it, yes, I'll find, find that company. It was out of Salina and you get a great big, um, why it's it wipes that you pull out and uh, we used to just do that with every book that came in um, because you know kids were passing things around all the time or flu and all that so yeah. yes I will do that I'll figure, find out what that was yeah I still have mine somewhere but I was just thinking that yes. was something that that gal had recommended yeah and Christy let me know what they cost as well okay. That okay. may be something that we can do is give everybody a jug of that or okay. whatever it is. Yeah. Just Are you foreseeing this quarantining going on through the school year? The three-day quarantine for all the books that come back when the kiddos bring them back for checkout? Um, what we're talking with public libraries about right now is um, definitely quarantining and disinfecting. And so they have a spray that they're just gonna spray on and wipe down. You can't clean the pages inside. You can only clean the outsides and the covers, DVDs, the cases and stuff like that. Um, we don't know what it's gonna look like or how long it's gonna take at this point. If we're social distancing still, we should be cleaning books, I think. Okay. Um, because that's the, the very best that we can do. Um, I think that most of us would be devastated if somebody caught something off of one of the books. Um, it's, this is just an easy way to know in our hearts that we've done everything we can do. Mm -hmm. So you can take some time and, and see if that, if some of this will work for you and at, Christy, Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Also, send them that um, table that Mary Beth made. It's she yeah. has a checklist. I and have got that, right. that. And then um, see where you might be in all of this. Okay, this is what Mary Mary Beth um, gave us an example that someone had made. And so it's thinking about the components of your library and and how you will phase in and i know it's gonna it's gonna be have to be along with your um your administration and what they what they do but i really wanted you to have some words and phrases and information so that you know you can tell them what you would like to see tell them now before they yeah. they craft something yeah N knowing you know have it based on information, you know, something you can show them. This is mm -hmm. what it probably should look like. Yeah. Um, and these are all in Word documents, so you can make them your own, change the tech, change the language, whatever it is that you need to do as well. So I'll just send out an email with these attachments. Um, uh, Hi. Marsha, um, I'll unmute you. Are you able to talk? Who, who are you guys talking to? Marsha. Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> not everybody has that ability. And, and Marsha, where are you from? If you can't talk, go ahead and type that in the chat. Um, so, uh, those are just the kind of the things I, I wanted to check in with you and, and see where people are and, um, give you some information. Um, have you guys, oh, I know, registering for the, um, for May 20th. You know you're gonna i hope you want to be there so you can vote and and you you are informed about the voting um so if you go to the cklsorg website over in the right hand corner is um the register and you just choose the may meeting 
and then just go through the process of of um, doing registering and each also each district also, received a paper packet we mailed them out but Christy will also send the PDF in case it got lost, your paper packet got lost in the mail shop. It has all the ballots in there and you need to return those to CKLS by the 15th of May. You can do those by email, fax, paper, um, whatever you wanna do, whatever's gonna work for you. Um, on that web page, that front page, <clears throat> also are links so if you have kids that are getting hold of you and saying, I need a library card, I, I want to be able to get into Sunflower eLibrary or whatever, those links are still there and they'll be there till June. Is that right, Gail? Oh, that, it's Marsha from Thunder Ridge. Oh, hi, Marsha. Um, the the uh what was i saying the library card for ckls oh, yeah. on the front on the front uh page of the ckls those links to get the library card and the state library card they'll be there till june yes and and if we're still in quarantine uh, it'll be extended but that's an easy way to get your teachers and your staff um cards so they can have have um, access to digital. Well, and, and um, that lets them get right now a Kansas library card and a CKLS library card. And um, ideally you get their library cards in the town that you're in, but we may just leave up that CKLS self-registration form because it's a lot easier, I think. Um, that's open 24 hours a day. Some of the libraries are not open during convenient hours. And that is a good way to get everybody registered. So they can use then with the CTLF card, they can use Sunflower eLibrary and Hoopla. And then with the state library card, there's Cloud Library, RB Digital, Book Stacks, just all kinds of stuff there. Did you guys, were you able to share um any of those links with your teachers, like the tumble books that are on the yes um, the website, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We actually put ours on our school website, and we have that link to the card up there. And I emailed all the students to let them know that it's there. So awesome! They have That's, access. Yeah, well, they've, been, they've been registering. Yeah. Good. I've I've sent my all of my students as well, and I gotten personal emails back saying that they were getting those cards so that's great yes yeah that that material there is is awesome um it is uh ckls put twenty thousand dollars of extra money into content on sunflower e library and we've got twenty thousand more um set aside for um hoopla if anybody's account starts to drain down on that it is awesome marcia says um, will we need a debugger at this point? I was at Kensington Community Library Board meeting last night where we will begin to open next Monday and learned about the debugger, the bed bug, bug zapper. I'm gonna tell her it is recommended. Have you guys had trouble with bed bugs in your school system? We did a couple of years ago and our principal got a chemical that we quarantined the books that brought came back from those students and let them set for a few days. But so do you recommend doing every book that comes back? All With public all libraries, we sure are. We sure how are. Many, how many books does it? I don't think so. It's big. At the time. Is it? It holds like two large suitcases at a time. Um, we are. Um, and one of the reasons is because of the career and well, things that are coming from around the state and around the country as well. Mm -hmm. um, the courier says that there are libraries regularly that have to be treated for bed bugs. So that's one of the reasons is that in our building, everything that comes in from patrons okay. and from the courier goes through the bug zapper first. How long does it take to go through the cycle? It says about three hours, but we run it for 24 hours just because that works with our cycle. Okay. What is, what is the cost of that? It's $200 on Amazon. Okay. 
We can send you a link. Okay. And they're back ordered. So of course, yeah. get it now. Yeah. Of course they are. I was looking for non-fat dry milk yesterday. Ha. Huh. Ah, good luck. There can't be any, but there cannot be anybody who's drinking that and being happy. <laughs> um, uh, the other thing I wanted to check in with you is um, the emergency closing lib guide. How is it, have have you found that helpful? Is there anything different I can add to it? Um, just let me know what you need. I'd be happy to add it. This past week, um, there have been a lot of children's books about COVID and they're online and there's links for them. So you might check that out. <laughs> I Marsha's having trouble. Um, she says we sound like robots, so I suggested she go out and come back in again and see if that helps. There's not a lot of uh, good um, waves for the for the internet up there. I she probably is going to have trouble. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Questions you have? We're here. It's really nice to see everybody's faces. Yes. And if you remember something afterwards, just let us know. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Um, when we first shut down, we sent school libraries the document on what you'd have to go through to clean them and stuff like that. And um, so, that was that was needed. We have to guess most of the time what you guys need. So we need to hear from you. Don't feel like you're bothering us or creating work for us at all. Inevitably, if you need something, it's created. We just need to find it and send it out. Um, I want you to be very comfortable contacting us for all that kind of stuff. Okay, one other question I had, you know, you're recommending the plexiglass in front of regular libraries. What do you feel about school libraries? Oh, good Lord. I think, I think we're recommending plexiglass and masks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, that's something that's going to make you more comfortable. I don't know. I, I don't know what school is going to look like. I can't imagine it with social distancing in place. And I think that may be why the governor is hoping that we're done with social distancing by the end of July so that schools can look like normal. Um, so I think right now it might still be too early to think about that. Um, you can also just use a clear plastic shower curtain. And so if that's something you think you might want to use, get it now because you can get them from the dollar store they're not going to cost mm -hmm. very much and you can just hang it up i'm hoping that by the end of july we'll be done as well I'll because then a lot of these things that we're talking about won't be necessary <laughs> and life will resume again mm -hmm. and how are you guys doing um emotionally and mentally are you good are you strong or are you struggling it's a thing that we've talked a lot about at our staff meetings and at our weekly director meetings with the public libraries because we've all gone through those different phases of grief, actually. How are you guys doing? I think we'll have more trouble thinking about going back. <laughs> uh -huh. than Sisters in, in public libraries will have worked through that and we'll be able to offer you tips on that. Um, if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe to the um, uh, CKLS Facebook page. There's a regular one and a school library one. We talk about things like that a lot. Um, and you can send good things out to your own list on the Google group as well. Or if you have any questions for them, be thinking about what questions you might have and we can, we can be able to send those answers out to you as well. Good. Okay. 
On the 20th, the morning is Dr. Stephen Albrecht. He's a specialist in library security, but not just like active shooter. It's also in how to work with difficult patrons or difficult people um, and things like that. I think he's going to be really uh, a great speaker. He does this presentation online all the time, so it's not much of a transition for him. And I encourage you, if you're interested, to go ahead and register for that as well. Okay. Well, good to see everybody. Good to see Hang you. in there. Yeah, thank you. you thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome.